How you doing? I'm Young Guru. I'm a recording and mix engineer. Been in the business for over 25 years now. I wanted to show you the sample chain that I created for Studio Verse called Sample Spice. Studio Verse is an online community. There are thousands of chains already made by some of your favorite mixers and producers that allow you to easily and quickly get a great sound focused on whatever is necessary. So I'll be showing you how I'll use my chains to mix this record. And I'll play the song just so you can get a feel. So in this song, like the majority of the songs that I do, uh, there's a sample that is the main bed of the music. In my work, a lot of the time I'm using two tracks or should I say samples that come from other sources. It doesn't allow me to get in and manipulate all of the separate instruments. But with this rack, I can deal with frequencies. I've separated so that you can add whatever you want to whatever frequency range. This allows you to better fit in vocals, better fit in drums, and generally deal with any situation that you're going to run across using a two-track source. So when I solo this, I'm starting to listen for what exactly is inside of the sample, or should we say the two-track, of the music. Historically, I would have to EQ, I'd maybe duplicate the tracks, I would do a bunch of things, but I would be introducing phasing. One of my greatest techniques was that I was doing sort of multi-band compression before that existed, where I would separate into three different tracks and make one the lower, make one the mids, and make one the highs. With Studio Rack, I don't have to do that. It eliminates all of that. I have this power and ability to do everything all in one plugin. So for this, the sample we're gonna go to, again, we open up, Studio Verse, and now we'll go to Guru Sample Spice, and we'll load that up. And now instantly, I have everything that I need to manipulate this sample. One of the greatest things that we have here is the multiband split, which allows us to split into, right now I've only done four, but I believe that you can go even further to five by pressing this plus button to split into different frequency ranges. So as you can see with this multiband split, I split here at 200. That means everything on one is from 20 to 200. Everything on two is in between 200 and 826. Everything on three is between 826 to 2655. And then everything on four is above that. So the reason that I do that is so that I can split into different frequency bands and make different effects on all of those frequency bands. This is perfect because it allows you to solo, allows you to mute, and also down here, which I love to do on samples, is if you hit this W button, I can move the width of this particular frequency band. So by moving up and down on my mouse, I can make this as mono as I want, I can reverse it, and I can make it as wide as I want. So as you can see on the bass frequency, I kept it mono because I want the bass to be in the middle. This is all the low rumble. And I'm taking care of a bit of that right now with setting a threshold for every time that it goes above this threshold I want it to duck. The reason that I'm doing that is because that's exactly where my kicks and my 808 are going to hit. So I don't want that low floor rumble there inside of the sample. But this is very powerful because I'm not actually EQing a dip down. I'm using a threshold to actually dip it every time it goes above something huge. Another great feature is that you can load plugins and have them disabled. Why is that necessary? Because sometimes you don't want to fish around for the plugin. You want to have them already loaded up so that creatively you can decide if you're going to use them or not. So inside of this, when dealing with my low frequency, I can add this R bass simply by turning it on. And again, I'll solo this. Now I'm affecting just the low frequencies. Incredible, incredible tool. Now I can deal with my low mids. Again, I have my EQ. Just 
adding a lot of warmth to those lower frequencies here. What I've also added to now is our tube channel strip. This is an incredible, incredible tool that is new from Waves. It just adds so much character and so much drive and gives us sort of excitement. One of the great things I try to do, or one of, should I say one of the main things I try to do, is to add excitement without adding volume. A lot of times we, as mixers, like to hear things louder and we think that if we're turning it up, that it automatically sounds better. But the main thing is to add that excitement without adding volume. And this is just perfect, perfect for that. It's amazing just by turning this off and turning it back on how much more energy you're getting inside of the sample. And I'm doing just a, li a light bit of compression here, but you know, this is again, you, you tailor to taste. Huge difference, huge difference. And if you notice, we're not getting an extreme level of volume, but again, this is the excitement part I'm talking about. And now we can concentrate on this higher mid frequency. Beautiful. Using an F6 to bring out exactly the parts that we need. Now, here I had the Abbey Road Saturator. I don't know if I necessarily need that. I'll listen to it all together and then maybe I can use a saturator, maybe not, but I don't want to overdo it because this is not one of those type of tracks. Um, but we'll, we'll see if we need it. Right now, it's, it's not really necessary. Uh, so we'll move on and we'll use our pull tech. Gives a little power around 1,000. There we go. Small difference, but necessary. The meta flanger is something that has been in my toolbox forever. And it just makes so much sense when you use it. The small bit of modulation just on those high frequencies is gonna add something that wasn't there. And of course, we're used to using this meta flanger, but the power of using this multi-band split allows us to do it just to those specific frequencies so that it's not affecting the bass. It's not something I would want on the bass. It's not something I would want on the low mids. So having it just on those high mids gives us something that wasn't there before. And again, we're spreading this out so that just the bass is in the middle and the rest of the samples are fully wide. We'll go again to the top frequencies now. Immediately, EQ, that brings out some of our highs there. Now, one of the other great things is that inside of these chains, 
you can do another split inside of a split. So I started with a multi-band split, and now I'm adding a parallel split just so that I can add reverb or any other effects or de or anything else to this particular chain. So now, I'm because the highs will be so much, I have a de ready to go, just in case. But again, adding that metaphalanger, but just over the high parts. And the real thing that we want to showcase here is that now inside of this parallel split, you can use this the same way that you would uh, ascend and return on an actual analog board. So our first one is our dry signal, and then our second signal becomes something that we can use here, use this fader, and bring it into tape. The big point that I'm trying to make here is that you can put more parallel or more multiband in any one of these slots. This becomes an extremely, extremely powerful tool. And again, one of the great things that I've been trying to explain is that we don't have to sit and tweak each individual plugin. One of the great parts of using this is being able to create macros. So if you look, and I take that width, and I can change the width of just the top frequencies by themselves so that I can play and now do it together. Sometimes you have things in different frequency ranges that you want to make sure that they sit in the correct part. But all of this, again, is manipulating this two-track, and this was impossible prior to having this plugin. So if you look at this macro for motion, it's assigned to the metaphalanger. And one thing you can do is go over here, and you can hit this pin button, so that whenever I open up another plugin, they'll all stay on top. So if you look at just this, the metaflanger, the motion will allow me to do this. It's increasing and decreasing the mix, while at the same time increasing and decreasing the gain of the saturator. It's another very powerful tool of being able to affect more than one thing at the same time. Now, if I want to bring up my magma channel strip, you can see that this focus on the macros is changing the mid ever so slightly, and it's also changing the drive ever so slightly. So the more mids that go up, the less the drive. The more drive that goes up, the less the mids. So this was a great introduction to Studioverse, the new feature in Studio Rack. Remember that all of these chains are instantly available right now in Studioverse. There's no downloading. You simply go in Studioverse, click load, and it's automatically in your session. So, happy mixing. Enjoy Studioverse.